How's it going everyone, it's Vivi and welcome to another Ratchet & Clank video. Slim Cognito's mysterious nature always, always got me curious when I was younger. Every time Slim would show up mid-gameplay, I was happy, I was excited. His voice certainly is something worth considering when looking at these floating eyes in the dark. His voice always seemed so relaxing, so calm. That tone of voice is what always made me curious about who this character really is. Insomniac Games certainly nailed that cool persona and mysterious type of character in the shadows thing. Oh, and let's not forget the inner window. <laughs> Hiding behind Slim Cognito's first line of dialogue and going commando. Put it in the slot. Put it in the slot. As a kid, that certainly went over my head. Listening to it now, Insomniac Games, you bunch of naughty dogs. Yup, to give you guys a refresher. Slim Cognito first appeared in Going Commando in several locations. We have Planet and Daco's Megapolis, Bolden's Silver City, and Tabora's Mining Area. The very first time you pressed on this mysterious red button, I mean, it didn't matter where you found that button first. If you press it for the first time, a mysterious truck appears, eyes pop out of the darkness, and you hear the words, put it in the slot. Ratchet then <laughs> realizes what he meant, like, oh, okay, you make weapon modifications, okay, nothing else. Once Ratchet realizes that, this mysterious already black market looking type of guy explains that he can turn Ratchet's weapons into powerful piece of equipment with a few tweaks. Yep, I can take your puny little weapon and with a few, uh, tweaks, tweaks. Tweaks the way he said it as a kid, it sounded so cool. I mean, just the sound of it. Tweaks. Now, by paying Slim Cognito Platinum Bolts, you could purchase permanent mods for your weapons, ranging from Acid, to Shock, to even Lock-On mod, which by the way, they're all stackable mods and permanent. Going Commando is well known for its ship sections. Well, Slim made sure our duo was well prepped up fighting in space. So what Slim did as well? He provided us with ship upgrades, our Star Explorer ship. However, it ain't free. This time, we had to pay him Raritanium. Ratchet first saw this ad of his, you know, upgrading ships on planet Natak in Canal City. The highlight of this ad was that if you're afraid to get caught with a modified ship, well, our secret would be safe with them. They would also hook us up quickly, cheaply, and quietly. All this was titled Legally Ambiguous Refashioning. When Slim mentioned that your secret is safe with us, us probably implied that Slim didn't work solo. However, as much as we'd like to believe so in Going Commando, the game didn't give us any other sort of indication that Slim worked as a group. Now here's a cool fact. Over on the cutting room floor for Going Commando, you can find unused audio clips for Slim Cognito. He would basically be making remarks while choosing which mod we wanted. Now one of those remarks, he says that he has to get to a manicure appointment. Let's go, pal. I got a manicure appointment to get to. And the other is saying he could get into a lot of trouble for this. I could uh, get in a lot of trouble for this. Now there is more of his cut dialogue over on the cutting room floor. There will be a link in the description below. Fast forward to up your arsenal. Our duo finds Slim on Aquatos. For some reason, Skid McMark's chickens out, creates an excuse that he has to feed his goldfish, and he's gone. This mysterious character calling out to Ratchet and Clank going up, well, it was Slim Cognito. The duo becomes aware they're not alone, and we easily recognize those two eyes that pop up in the dark. They recognize that familiar voice, and Slim explains that he had to run in with the cops because he sold a suck cannon to a miner, to someone who was under the age of 18. So he went from Bolgon to Solana, and coincidentally, or was it? Slim stumbles on these two who he deems his favorite customers. Slim thought uh, being on Aquatos was less conspicuous. So finding him here, he sells us weapons from Megacorp. If you had a save file of Going Commando, you would get these weapons for free. 
the lava gun, and the mini turret glove. What I always appreciated about these weapons from Slim Cognito, their power level was close or pretty much equal to the power level of weapons in Up Your Arsenal. In Going Commando, there was a similar situation with the Gadgetron Lady on Planet Barlow. I mean, if you had a save file of the first game, you would get these Gadgetron weapons for free. However, those weapons always felt like a thank you by Insomnia Games. Thank you for sticking around. Because from what I recall, those Gadgetron weapons in Going Commando were really, really weak. So, let's get back on topic, shall we? In the unreleased 5th Quark vid comic, Shaming of the Q, Slim turns out to be the narrator. What this tells us, somehow, one way or another, Slim Cognito got a voicing gig for one of these vid comics. Unfortunately, the 5th chapter wasn't released for unknown reasons. I take it Quark's ego wouldn't allow this 5th vid comic to go out to the public. After all, in this final chapter, Quark is knocked out by Lawrence, and then imprisoned and, you know, goes all through that hassle. These were probably events deemed by Quark not to be very heroic of him. Now here's the thing, in Vid Comic 4, a piece of the script was missing. Quark took over the usual narrator for that Vid Comic. What happened here, well, judging from the story Slim tells us in the 5th Vid Comic, Quark didn't want to reveal what really happened later. But for some reason, Slim Cognito knew of the true events that took place after in Quark's life. It's as if Slim was watching Quark from afar. I mean, how else would he know about Quark's story? Unless Quark decided to be truthful and give him a job as a narrator, but I mean, let's be real here, it's Captain Quark we're looking at. As stated previously, he's egotistical. He always wants to be known as the hero, the greatest, and all that. If Quark had hired Slim, Quark would have made sure that the whole thing would be scripted to his favor. So long story short, it's an unreleased vid comic, which I'd say would correlate well with the black market Slim dealt with most of his life. One way or another, Slim gained knowledge of Quark's story, tried making profit out of it but ultimately didn't happen. Now as for the rest of Up Your Arsenal, Slim would contact Ratchet, telling him that a new weapon was available. This would happen as you make progress through the game. By doing so, you'd eventually get your hands on the bouncer, the plasma coil, and the shield charger. Upon purchasing the shield charger, Slim reveals that this one was from Mr. Fizzwidget. He even states that Mr. Fizzwidget sends you his regards. This free weapon we can say was actually given to us for free. Perhaps this was Mr. Fizzwidget's way of saying thank you for helping me in the Bolgon Galaxy. The fact Slim knew Fizzwidget tells us that Slim was also familiar to other folks, not just Ratchet and Clank. Another cool fact, unused dialogue was discovered in an August beta of Up Your Arsenal. You can find all of this over on the wiki. There's a couple of interesting things to note here. Slim would sell the Rhino, that was their original plan. He also claimed to have worked with Thugs for Less. Going back to what I just said, he was known throughout the galaxy. This one comes courtesy of my boys at Thugs for Less. Look, it's completely understandable why they took these lines out. Either they didn't really add much to the story or they just came off contradictory. The Thugs for Less one, for example. Thugs and Ratchet never had a friendly relationship, so that line of courtesy would have sounded very unusual. So it's completely understandable why they took it out. Slim later appears in Size Matters, which by the way Insomniac Games deems canon. The same goes for Secret Agent Clank. These two games right here were not developed by Insomniac Games. Now the events of Size Matters take place after Deadlocked, according to High Impact Games. So as I was saying, although Slim appears, he doesn't say anything. He appears on three planets and we just notice his eyes. Again, he sells us weapon mods and ship upgrades. Not too surprising there. I take it the developer looking at Size Matters thought we'd recognize this character. So they thought, okay, people will just use their past knowledge to try and describe the character. Something like that. Or a more realistic approach. They just didn't bother getting a voice for Slim in the game, so they just thought of putting him in just like that. What does Size Matters tell us? That Slim always appears when we need him. As for Secret Agent Clank, which I personally believe is a dream Clank is having, I mean, it's a pretty cool theory if you think about it a little. The ending of Tales of Destruction, Clank is taken by the Zoni. 
Tools of Destruction was released in 2007. Secret Agent Clank was released in 2008. So it's like we can say Clank was put to sleep and he started dreaming about being a secret agent again. Try and connect the dots here a bit. It's cool if you think about it. Slim in this game appears to be imprisoned after selling black market merch, especially to us. Clank uh, somehow gets into contact with Slim. Clank tells Ratchet to try and find a code that would help Clank enter the high stakes room at the casino. Slim just so happened to be someone familiar with that game. He offered to give Ratchet a code if he defended him from past customers in jail who would pretty much be out to get him. That's about it for Secret Agent Clank. We last heard from Slim Cognito in Zordoom Prison on Planet Visceron in Tools of Destruction. From the intercom, inmate 829C, I think that's what we hear? Cognito Slim is told to report to Sector 12 for a cryo sleep chamber. Inmate number 829C, Cognito Slim, please report to Sector 12 for transport to cryo sleep chamber. What did he do this time, you might ask? He apparently showed his Class B gravity cannon to a group of female tonfoids during a rock concert in Meridian City. That was the last time we heard anything of Slim Cognito. As the series went on, we come to realize that the role of the shady black market salesperson went to the smuggler. Or a little wild theory here. Like I said previously, if Slim Cognito worked as a group, I mean going back to that ad in Going Commando how your secret is safe with us? At Slim Cognitos, your secret is safe with us. Could the smuggler be the type of person who might have worked with Slim Cognito? I mean, they both deal with the black market. I mean, if the writing of the game ever goes in that direction that, oh, by the way, yeah, Slim Cognito used to be my shady partner, he wound up in jail a couple of times and all that, I wouldn't be too surprised. But the difference here is, Slim Cognito always hides in an object, and then we have the smuggler out in the open. That's the difference between these two characters. So back to the point, the smuggler, who realistically pretty much replaced Slim Cognito, he appears in Tools of Destruction, Quest for Booty, A Crack in Time, and Into the Nexus. He mostly worked for Bolts. Now according to episode 16 of Useless Podcasts of Going Commando with Tony Garcia and Mike Stout, well, Slim Cognito was originally supposed to be this character right here, the Shady Salesman. This is the guy that sold me the rhino in the first game, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. The I don't shady know character, here, I think we called him. Like he was different. He, gives you here. he was different than Slim Cognito, although, I re if I remember correctly, Slim Cognito was originally supposed to be this character. Now, looking at the 2016 reimagining, the shady salesman. Looking at the credits, he's named Slim Cognito. That's gotta be him, right? But let's be real, he's not the Slim Cognito we know. Put it in the slum. The 2016 game is now its own entity. I'm simply saying this because we're now getting a brand new game titled Rift Apart, which continues after the events of Into the Nexus. So we're back to the usual timeline. I'm not saying Slim Cognito could return, I mean, it's almost like the smuggler took his role, like I said previously. But, we are dealing with alternate dimensions after all. Slim Cognito coming back would be such a great surprise. Slim is like another variant of the plumber. Someone who's always there when we need him. Be it weapon mods, ship upgrades, he's there. It's like he's almost omnipresent. He's everywhere, keeping an eye on our duo. Even when he's in jail, regardless of what Secret Agent Clank really is, I mean, if it were a dream, then Slim also appeared in Clank's dream, aiding Ratchet. Because that's what Clank would wish to dream about. In other words, Slim appeared in Clank's subconscious, which then leads us to the Zoni, who were keeping an eye on Clank at the Great Clock. Slim appearing in Secret Agent Clank, if it is indeed a dream, it's a result of studying Clank's mind. Slim being a reoccurring mysterious character in his life, I mean, whatever they were studying in Clank, it all manifested itself and created a dream for Clank. Orvis, being Clank's father, most likely hoped that he'd be able to keep tabs on his son Clank, even if from far away. I said in the past, I think, that the plumber is someone who probably met Orvis. The plumber was Loki keeping an eye on us, on Orvis's behalf. Now looking at Slim, instead of contacting us, hey, I'm on planet, insert name here, he just appears, hey, guys, you're my favorite customers, come and buy weapons, you know. 
And yeah, obviously, once we know where to find him, he keeps us updated. I mean, what we had in Up Your Arsenal, for example, when other Megacorp weapons became available. I also find it weird how Slim always remained hidden. It's as if he didn't want to reveal himself physically, but why? The Smuggler, for example, he deals with the black market, and yet he was there fully, physically. But why not Slim? Most realistic conclusion to all this, Slim Cognito really just had a very, very bad reputation, and was simply afraid to reveal himself out in the open. Or, let's uh, make a little joke. <laughs> Slim is a zony. Vivi, where are you going with this? Hey, I told you it's a joke, okay. Thus explains him hiding in something all the time. <laughs> Zony can't live in Ratchet's universe unless they have armor. Slim would be someone sent by Orvis to keep an... <laughs> Slim would be someone sent by Orvis to keep an eye on these two. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm just reaching here. But as a reference, Naughty Dog gave us a plot twist of the precursors being Otzels. Some hated that, and some loved it. I'm not saying I want to see something like that with Slim Cognito, but um, I'm just saying. <laughs> Slim Cognito be like, Clank, I'm your uncle. Oh my god. I'm just having too much fun here, guys, alright? So, with that said, folks, I believe this is it for the video. So, as usual, if you have your own questions, theories, or anything of such sort, leave it all in the comments section below. And as always, I've been Vivi, and thank you so much for watching.